All right. All right. Let's see. I think that we already did the test for subspace, didn't we? No, we did definition of the subspace. We did definition of the subspace. Did we do example one? It is a bunch of examples. Oh. It's more of a more, not really doing stuff with it, more so it's more. I, I do believe we may have, this may be why I didn't do it. It may be that we just uh, started, that we're supposed to start on 4.3 and I didn't even notice the marks here. Does that make sense? I think we started it. Well, oh, we, we did. We did. Space. Okay, I thought we did. Okay, uh, and it says show that the set, example one, uh, W, which is, yeah, we did that, and I remember it now. I think, I think we're either we did on that. theorem 4.5 or example three. Okay, theorem 4.5 then, because the other mark I had was example three, and I didn't remember we went that far. Okay, so let's start with uh, theorem 4.5 on page 162, section 4.3 in chapter three. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to see two. I have to hold it down a little bit. There it goes. <laughs> okay. I, I can't remember if I told you all this before, but let me say it again here. Um, my office hours on Wednesday. Wednesday. Actually, my office hours are supposed to end at 2 o'clock, which is right after my Cal 3 class. Uh, but I'm usually here after 2 o'clock, at least for an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours, okay. But this Wednesday, I will definitely not be because I've got a meeting on the Birmingham campus. Last I checked, the consensus has been around 3 o'clock, okay. So I'll have to leave here between 2 and 2.30 to get there by 3. So I will be around a little bit, but not very long. But then Friday, normally I have real office hours on the Birmingham campus from 745 to 1145, not this Friday or next Friday because I've got treatment both, both Fridays. So just wanted to get that out there for, remembered it in my first class, I forgot to say it for the second class. So. Basically, if you want to do anything, if you want to have me do anything for work study, today's the day. For what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for office hours, the only ones I really will have are, are today from 12.15 to 3.15, and Thursday, 12.15 to 3.15. And there's a lunch in each of those, and there's also a lunch uh, Wednesday, but that's my only office hour, 12.15 to 1.15 on Wednesday. Okay. 11.15 to 12.15 on Wednesday, sorry. So, okay. so here's theorem 4.5. Test for a subspace. I didn't remember this one. Okay. Let's let, or if... Uh, w is a non-empty subset, subset, okay, not subspace, subset of a vector space, I think that's V, right? Yeah, V. Then, if that's true, then that implies that W is a subspace of V if and only if, I'm just going to put IFF, if and only if the following closure conditions hold. So now, here's what's given. You have some vector space V which is a set of whatever, polynomial, matrices, whatever, vectors even, okay, uh, a vector space. W is a non-empty subset of that, meaning it has some of those vectors in it, some of those matrices, some of those polynomials, some of those continuous functions, some of whatever is in that is in W. Uh, it's a subset, non-empty subset. But what makes it a subspace if and only if these two closure conditions hold, okay? The first of these is that 
if u and v, now I'm drawing them as vectors, but remember we're defining vectors as being, you know, it could be a matrix, it could be other. Whatever it is, you know, we're calling a vector. If these two are in W, then the sum is also in W. U plus V is in W. If each of them are in the, the subspace, the sum of them has to be in the subspace. You wrote Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is an and, that's a plus. Okay, sorry. Okay. And number two, the second of these, if U is in W, okay, and C is any scalar, then... CU is also in W. Okay. Now. So you multiply it by any constant. Right. And so you, then it's in with W plus E and then C times So let's say this. Let's say that the vector space V was this octet of space, the positive octet of space. Okay? Uh, that's not a subspace, by the way, but if it were, okay, then if this plane that's in here is obviously would be a subset of the space, some plane that's in here. So any vector that's in this plane, the sum of those two vectors is in the plane, and the scalar multiple is in the plane. Okay. Now, if I'm just taking this octet, I'm leaving off all the negatives. So now I'll just extend it to all space, and that would be the entire plane. Yeah, and then you've got it. So that would be an example. The W would be a subset of space, but these two vectors now, Extend that to polynomials or other things like this, and you've got the general idea of what it's going on. So that's the one that I can sort of visualize. Kind of sounds so cold in here. I touch my head and I freeze because my hands are so stinking cold. Okay. Yes. I did wear a jacket today. I just didn't bring it up here. I need gloves. Though. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> What's that? Yeah. <laughs> now, there's a little remark up here. Uh, let's just read through the proof. The proof of this theorem in one direction is straightforward. That is, if W is a subspace of V, then uh, W is a vector space and must be closed under addition of scalar multiplication. Yeah. Because every subspace is in itself a vector space. To prove the theorem in the other direction, because that's what the if and only if, you know, that means it goes both ways. Okay. Uh, to prove the theorem in the other direction, we assume that W is closed under addition and scalar multiplication, and we note that uh, UV and W are in W, then they are also in V, because it's a subset. Consequently, the vectors space axioms, and you go back to two, three, four, you know, those ten that we had are satisfied automatically because vectors W is closed under addition and scalar multiplication follows up for any V and W scalar C equals zero. Yeah. That doesn't say a lot to me. I mean, it's sort of kind of obvious those are true. Now, there's a little remark here. Note that if W is a subspace of a vector space V, then both W and V must have the same zero vector zero, okay? Uh, and exercise 55 is a proof of that. You're asked to prove it. So like, because the subspace of a vector space is a vector space, it must contain the zero vector. 
Remember, that's required of any vector space. Uh, in fact, the simplest subspace of a vector space V is the only, is the one consisting only of the zero vector, okay? And then any multiple of that or sum of that, you know, is always going to be the zero vector. Uh, it's, it's called the zero subspace, and another subspace of V is V itself. Now, that was true of sets. It's also true of spaces. Uh, the empty set is a subset of every set, and a set is always a subset of itself. Well, same thing with spaces, empties. Space is a subset of every space, vector space, and the vector space is a subset of itself. Okay. So, let's do example two. I think we may easily need the whole thing. Yeah. I think I'm going to sit like this because the heat coming out of my computer warms my fingers there. All right, let's go. Subspace of M22. This is the matrix space made up of two by two matrices. Second, yeah, the two two. Okay. Uh, let W be a set of all two by two symmetric spaces. So W is a set. Uh, that's, that's not it. Yeah, I think that's the symbol for set. No, that's subset. Let's just write it up. Yuck. What's that? That's the. It looks like an E kind of. Yeah, that's is the element of. Right. Yeah, and I use that for is in that, you know, is the element of that. Uh, that's my abbreviation. It may not be technically totally correct, but it's the one I use for it. Okay, let W be the set of all two by two matrices. Symmetric, ma oh, symmetric matrices. Have we done symmetric matrices? Is that what you're asking? Okay. Uh, I'm about to say, I think that was in a problem at the end of a chapter or a section, but let me find it. Uh, oh, yeah, I think you, it was uh, in the homework problem. Yeah, exactly. Symmetric matrices 57, it says is where it was. I'm almost willing to bet that's a homework exercise. No. It was all remarked in when we were doing transpose of matrices. A yeah, that's right. Note that the square matrix in part C is equal to its transpose. Such a matrix is called a symmetric matrix. C is an example of that. You have a diagonal that could be anything. It doesn't have to be the same numbers like this one is but the off-diagonals exactly reflect each other, okay? That could have been a 1, 2, 0, 2, 7, 0, 0, 0, 14. I mean, you could make up any numbers to put in there for the diagonal, but to be symmetric. Uh, and, of course, it must be square. And the, the AIJs are equal to AJIs for every vertical. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Set of all two by two symmetric matrices. Basically what that is, two by two matrices, as long as these two numbers are the same. These can be anything, these two are the same as that set of all symmetric matrices. Okay, if it's a two by two. All right, now. Show that W is a subspace of the vector space M22 uh, with the standard matrix operation of matrix addition and scalar multiplication. So, in other words, M22 is a set of all 2x2 two two matrices 
so that W is a, the set of all two by two symmetric matrices is a sub subspace of M22. Well, to begin with, obviously W is a subset of M. M is all, this is symmetric, so clearly that will work. Now, Yeah, it is a subset. Now, to show that it's a subspace, here are the two things we have to show. If you have two matrices, let's call it W1 and W2, okay? These are two by two matrices, and they have to be symmetric. So I'm just going, for funsies, call it A, B, B, C, right? And the second one we'll call... D, E, E, F, right? Okay, those are two symmetric matrices, two elements of that. Now this says that the sum of those two must be in W. If you add those to w, together, W1 plus W2, that would be A plus D, B plus E, B plus E, C plus F. And sure enough, that's a symmetric, symmetric matrix also. If I could read my writing, that's an E, not a C. Okay. Because the off-diagonals are equal. Okay. And then similarly, if you multiply by a scalar, and why did I use C? Let's call the scalar S. Multiply either one of those by S, and you get the matrix SA, SB, SB, SC. Well, guess what? That's a symmetric matrix, too. And that is in W. Okay? So the... Um, and then that would just be through S converted. Yeah, exactly. And it's still... Yeah. And it's still a uh, symmetric matrix. Okay, now, uh, that's doing it that way, but now they do it, use it, go back and use the other definition, recall that a square matrix is symmetric when it's equal to its own transpose, because M2 two is a vector space, you only show that W, a subset of M22, satisfies the conditions in theorem 4.5, that's what we did. Begin by observing that W is non-empty, okay, because it contains sets that are not all zeros. Uh, w is close under addition, um, and they use, did it using the transpose, transposes uh, and using the rules for transposes. Uh, so basically, we did those things, but we just didn't use them using the transpose rules. Uh, actually, it was probably a little more generic if we had used those transpose rules. Okay? But this is doing basically the same thing. So, I think we're ready for example three. Uh, Are you? Actually work oh, no. Perish the thought. All right. Let's keep it weird. <laughs> Let W be the set of singular matrices of order two. So W is the set of singular matrices of order two. And uh, yeah, if it's singular or non-singular, it, that implies it's square. Okay. So these are two by two also. Show that. W is not a subspace of M22. Show that W not a subspace of M22. Okay? Now, all you have to show is come up with one that wouldn't be. Okay? So, Let's say W1 is equal to A 
set of singular matrices. Now, this is a two space, so the simplest one is one, zero, zero, zero. Obviously, that's not, that's a non singular, that is a singular matrix, right? This determinant is a zero, right? It has a row of zeros at the bottom. Come up with a dozen different reasons that's a non -sing as a singular matrix. Well, guess what? W2 is also a singular matrix. 0, 0, 0, 1. Right? Uh, it could. Because it's, it's a zero vector. It's certainly... Uh, but doing what I want to do, that won't help me any. So what I want to do is add these two together. Now, if this is a subspace, the sum of that must also be a singular matrix, right? Is it? Not. Okay. Yeah, because that is a non-singular matrix. Okay? So therefore, you've just shown that set is not a subspace because it doesn't obey the addition. It's not closed under addition. Okay? Yeah. And that's the easy way to do this one. I call them W1, W2, they call them A and B. Yeah, and that's definitely not singular. Okay. Now, example four. Let's do that one. Oops. Okay. Show that W, they like W, equal to the set of all ordered pairs, x1, x2, such that x1 is greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, and x2 is greater than or equal to 0. And x2 greater than or equal to 0. Okay? With the standard operations, okay, of matrix addition and scalar multiplication, it's not a subspace, not subspace of R2. R2 is the plane, the XY plane, basically. This is set of ordered pairs, set of all ordered pairs is R2. Okay. And this is the standard definition. Okay. All right. Now, certainly W is a subset of this because it's a set of ordered pairs, X1, X2, only you have restrictions on it. So basically, you're in the first quadrant. Let that be R2, the green board. First quadrant would be W, including the lines. And certainly the zero vectors on there because zero, zero is there. Okay. We're not normally doing that, but you see it's obviously there. Now, why would this not be a subspace of R2? Yeah. Well, actually, you only have to do the uh, the two oh, the in test th for subspace, right? So yeah. They, U plus V should be in both of them. Right? Yeah, and it is. And U is in both of them. If there's any scalar to U, it's no, the C is no scalar. Absolutely. That rules it out. The scalar multiplication can be for any C, that would include a negative C, that would come definitely out. So that would be the, the, the exception, okay? It shows that it can't be. Um, but you also have to show that it's not empty, and obviously it has all those vari vari ordered pairs on it. And it's closed under addition. It is not, however, closed under scalar multiplication. Uh, yeah, okay. you just did it very nicely. You will often encounter encounter, goodness gracious, 
sequences of nested subspaces. Yeah. Oh, you used to be a computer science major. You all like nesting, don't you? Okay, no mind. Um, for instance, consider the vector spaces P0, which is this set of all zero order polynomials, zero or less ordered polynomials. P1 is a set of all first order and last polynomials, so that would include all your zeros. And that's a subset of P2, which is a set of all quadratics and smaller polynomials, so it would include all the linears and constants. P3 would be cubic polynomials, but it would include all, all polynomials, not cubic polynomials, but cubic and less lower degree polynomials. So because they contain the or less, those are all uh, subsets of each other. Now, This is vector spaces P0 through Pn, where Pk is a set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to k with standard operations. You can write, and this is what we already know. Now, if j is less than or equal to k, then Pj is a subspace of Pk. Okay? Um, and ju just means that, say, if k was 7, okay, it would be the set of all polynomials degree 7 or less, and if j was 5, set of all polynomials degree 5 or less would certainly be in j. And, but it's also a subspace because every polynomial space is a vector space. All right, so let's move to example 5. Subspaces of functions, and this comes from calculus. Let W5, let's see, do I need, let me take this off because it may be confusing since they do use W in this one too. Let W5, okay, be the vector space, okay, of all functions. Find on zero one okay okay let W one two three four be defined as follows W one set of all polynomial functions okay, that are defined on 0 to 1. Okay, so W5 is a kind of suspicious. set of all functions defined on 0 to 1. W1 is a set of all polynomial functions. W2 is a set of all Functions differentiable, uh, set of all differentiable functions. I can't write. Okay. Okay. W3 is a set of all continuous functions. Okay. And W4 is a set of all integral functions. Okay. Goodness gracious. A few years ago, several years ago now, uh, when I had the first set of rounds of chemo, the heavy duty stuff, the, uh, right after my first round of it, I got swelling in my legs because of all the dead cells. I, my body couldn't get rid of them fast enough, so they gave me a diuretic to help get rid of the fluid. They also gave me steroids 
to reduce the swelling and stuff. But between the chemo and the steroids, I got shingles. And they started here and worked their way around here. And every now and then, I'll get what they call post-herpetic neuralgia. Some nerve that was affected by that just starts going, mm, as if it has them all over again. It doesn't, but it's more like a memory of it. And that's what I was just having, and it was just driving me nuts. But it's, uh, yeah, it's not pleasant. But that's why I was doing so strangely it wasn't. And maybe the cold is contributing to that. I don't know. But, okay. Really cold over here. Yeah. So, let's see if this is true. Certainly, all polynomial functions. Now, let's see. What is it we're asked to show you? Uh, show that W1 is a subset of W2, is a subset of W3, is a subset of W4, is a subset of W5, and that Wi is also a subspace of Wj for all i less than or equal to j. So that all these not only are subspaces, subsets of each other, but subspaces. All right, now, polynomial functions. Okay, polynomial functions are, of course, smooth and continuous. Okay, so of course they're all differentiable, and of course it would also be continuous, and it would also be integral because you can do all that to them, and they are certainly functions that are defined on zero to one. And these are all defined on zero to one. I left those words out. That was this is true of all those zero to one goes all over the back. Okay. Now, there are other differentiable functions. All polynomial functions are differentiable, but not all differentiable functions are polynomial. Like sines, you know, e, things like that. It's not polynomial. So certainly all of these fall within those, because all polynomial functions are differentiable, but all, not all differentiable. No. Now, W1 is the subset of W2. W2, exactly. Okay. Now, all differentiable functions are certainly continuous because you can't differentiate if they don't come together, but not all continuous functions are differential. F of value function is, is continuous, but it doesn't, yeah, because it has a cusp of it. Exactly. So, uh, so that. This is a subset of that. W2 is a subset of W3. Now, all continuous functions uh, can be integrated. Let's see, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, you can do the Riemann sum or whatever, you can just break it into things. But not all integrable functions are continuous. Yeah, because you can integrate. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so not all integrable, but certainly all continuous functions you can integrate. Uh, but you can't integrate a non discontinuous function. It's like a regression nesting net. Yeah, that's exactly, and that's why they call it the nesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These are nested functions. And then W4 certainly is all functions, you know, all integral functions are there. So there are other functions that can't be integrated. They're also functions defined as zero to one. So all these are subsets of each other, going down like this, are all subspaces. We know that all set of all polynomial functions are as a subspace. We know that is a space, a vector space. Uh, and because it is, and it's a subset of these, is all differentiable functions. Well, what we have to do is a sum of two polynomial functions is a polynomial function. And a multiple of the polynomial functions are polynomial functions. Differentiable functions, because the sum of uh, two derivatives, the derivatives of their sums, that's how you take derivatives of sums, you can split them up or put them there, okay? That works. And any multiple, yeah, you can differentiate. Any multiple of a differentiable function is also differentiable, okay? 
So that's it. And uh, let's see, the other thing is these are not empty sets. That's the other thing. And then continuous functions. Uh, you add two continuous functions together. Say again. It's still going to be a continuous function. And our integral functions, the sum of two integral functions, is an integral function. And you, you know, can always put a constant out. Always put a constant out in front. <laughs> and then certainly, this is a vector space as well. So they are, in addition to being subsets of the next one, they're also subspaces of the next one as well. Okay. And of course, they all contain these other functions. So they're a little diagram off to the side of those. W1 being a little circle, all the rest of them ellipses, it looks like. Uh, that sort of says it all. Now, uh, note in example 5 that if U, V, and W are vector spaces such that W is a subspace of V, and V is a subspace of U, then W is also a subspace of U. That's kind of the, uh, it's kind of nested too, you know. Um, what do you call that? The transitive property of subspaceness or something like that. The special case of the next theorem tells you that the intersection of two subspaces is a subspace as shown in figure uh, 411. Okay? Here is theorem 4.6. Let's clear this. What's that? I can't read it. Cow? Oh, you can eat a cow. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm hungry, too. Okay. How much time do we have? Yeah, I thought we had a fair amount of time. I didn't think we took that too much at the beginning. Okay. All right. Theorem 4.6. If V and W are both subspaces, of the vector space U, vector space U, okay, that's the given, then the intersection, V intersect, I do that at least half the time. When I go to write intersection, I put the bar in it and make it an A. I'm just so used to writing A's, it just comes naturally. Uh, V intersect W, okay, it's also a subspace. It's a sub, uh, we, don't, we don't have a symbol for that. I keep putting subset, but that's not right. Subspace of U, okay, the, the intersection is. All right. Now, a little bit of this goes to uh, what it means to be a subset, okay? I mean, to be an intersection, okay? Yeah, it has the overlap. What's that? It has the overlap. Yes, it has the overlap. So, now, B and W have to have things in common. They have to have things in common. Uh, otherwise, it's a zero set, and it's an empty set. And if it's empty set, it's an empty subspace, and empty subspace is always a subspace. So even if they don't overlap, it still is a subspace. It is a subspace, because an empty space is a subspace of every space. Okay. So even if they don't overlap, it's fine. Now, if they do overlap, do we guarantee this will work? Okay. I'm sure there's restrictions. What's that? I'm sure there's restrictions. I don't think so, because you see, if V and W, the intersection of that, um, 
let's say that we have V1 and V2 are in V. Okay? But they're also in W because they're in the intersection of the two. Okay? Well, then because they're in V and in W, um, yeah, that, that's it. That the sum of those two has to also be in that intersected space. Now that's that's the part that uh, that to me, like you were saying, could there be some exception to that? Indeed, there there aren't. Okay, uh, because the V in V, as you know, if you see the picture over here. Uh, Have you done Venn diagrams? Yeah, okay. Um, I like to put the universal set here. Okay. So, to be a subspace, everything in W has to be in the regular universal space. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah in, in that case, I don't see any issue. V, W, and this is V intersect W. Because in order for those to intersect, they both have Right. Follow, thus making them valid for the so, so, if you have some vector that's in this, it's got to be in V and then it's got to be in W. Okay. Now, but, the sum of two vectors in here, uh, it certainly would have to be in V, which could include something out here. But if these are also in W, they can't be out there. Alright? Because W is a subspace of U, V is a subspace of U, so if it's in V, it's got to be, the sum has to be somewhere in here, but remember we're assuming they're in this intersection. When they're in the intersection, uh, you can't add two of them and be over here, because that would violate them. They, they're in W2, so they couldn't be over there. They've got to be within here and within there, so they have to be in the, in the intersection. Okay. Um, and the subspace has to include zero, right? Yeah. So, wouldn't the intersection have to include zero? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So what does that Huh? Well, uh, Okay. But if okay. Said, what you just said, this has to B has to include the zero vector. Yeah. This has to include the zero so, vector. So yeah. therefore, by definition, the zero vector has to be in the intersection right. because it's one of those vectors that's in both of them. So therefore, the intersection can take the zero vectors all the time. Okay. I guess uh, I was, yeah. He drew a third circle and made it. What's that? He drew a third circle. And well, if you drew it and it included some, then to be in here, it would have to be in this one and in that one, and in this one. And you know the zero vector has to be in all three, so it would have to be in there. But the, uh, the other intersections are not. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, then, yeah then they wouldn't. Exactly. Then yeah. Kind of yeah. Kind of right. Yeah. Exactly. Unless your other circle is out here, and... Then you really have some would, problems. It wouldn't be a subspace. It wouldn't be a subspace because it couldn't include the zero vector because it has nothing in common. In fact, it, it would. And the zero vector is right there. <laughs> it has to be there somewhere. It may be the only thing in common. All right. It touches the point. What's that? It just, compared, it just includes that point. That point and that point alone, that's the zero vector. It would have to. Okay, so sure enough, the same thing could be said for scalar multiplication. Um, every vector in here, v1 or v2, uh, multiplied by any other vector, by any scalar, has to also be in here, but that has to be true for v and for w, so therefore, yeah, those all have to be in there. There's, there's no way around it. Okay. Now, 
Let's go to subspaces of Rn. New subtopic here. <clears throat> Rn is a convenient source for the examples of vector spaces. And in the remainder of this section, we're devoted to looking at subspaces of Rn. You mean no more polynomials and matrices? And... Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're just looking at Rn. Huh? Yeah, they're fine. Uh, functions, continuous functions, and yeah. Okay, so Rn is just spaces as we understand, but it could be beyond, n could be beyond 3, which is where we live. Okay. Um, what's that? Yes, we want to stay here too. All right, so let's determine subspaces of R2. Which of these two subsets is a subspace of R2? R2 is the entire plane. So A, this is example 6, is a set of points such that x1 plus 2y1. All right, let's just make it set of all x, y. There's no reason to do subspect. Okay. Set of all x, y such that, goodness gracious, there it goes again, is equal to zero. I haven't had these in so long. Um, and here's B, the set of all ordered pair X, Y, such that X plus 2Y is equal to 1. What's that? Yeah, oh yeah, you can get them. Oh yeah. No, no, no. They start with a little patch of itchiness, and I don't have that. I just have the the, the nerves going. It's sort of, you know, when they talk about fibromyalgia and stuff like that, that's similar stuff, but it's not called left finger. This is called left finger. I am hoping anyway. Okay. The diabetic nerve pain. It's just shooting pain through a nerve. And this was because I had shingles there. Okay, which of those two subsets is a subspace of R2? When they give us R8, they certainly are subsets of R2. Yes. Both of them are. Which of them are subspaces of R2? Or both. It's what? Can, can we apply those two, the two yeah. check rules that we've been using? Yeah, that, they, they may be a little tougher to do in this case, but certainly you should be able to. Uh, but there's one real simple one that, that, that is applied by the other two, but it knocks one of these out from its nose. Yeah, you got it exactly. That's kind of the, the zero zero is in A, but it's not in B. Right? So certainly B is a sub that's a line that is when Y is zero, X is one then X is Yeah, zero, when, one. when when X is zero, Y is equal to one half. You know? So zero zero isn't on that line. Both of these are lines with slope of Minus one half. Yeah. <clears throat> Negative one half. So they're spoken like this. One on both of the origins, one on the other. Okay? I could do it with them there. And uh, so A would be a subspace. They're both subsets, have the same number of elements if you want to talk about them. It's a number, but 
You know, there's both lines, okay, identical lines except one goes to the origin and one goes out. So the first is the stuff space, the second is not. Okay? Um, now, Okay, you could show the first one is, and they do it. Uh, by sort of parameterizing this. Because that's true, you know that x is equal to minus 2y, right? So, you have a parameter t, where x equals t, then y is always equal to uh, negative 2t. Um, oh, did you say, hey, I can't hear you. Okay, you started it? Yeah. Okay. Is that by Sarmiento or by Torres? <laughs> but, okay. Uh, in, the, in the, yeah, that's fine. In the uh, role book, you're listed as Torres. Okay, right, yeah. Oh, you're Sarmiento and Torres. Okay. Uh, let's see, what did I say? X is equal to 2t. Uh, well, So, then if you did that and added two together and, and multiply by scalars, you'll find they all work, okay? This one, you don't have to do any of that to show it doesn't contain the real thing, okay? So, you could use the first two, those two rules to show this is, then to show that doesn't include the zero vectors, all you have to do. All you need is a counterexample, any counterexample to show it's not, okay? That's what they... Did that. that was example six. Now, of those two lines in example six, the one that is a subspace in R2 is the one that passes through the origin. This is a characteristic of subspaces of R2. That is, if uh, W is a subset of R2, subset, then it is a, a subset of R2, then it is a subspace if and only if one of the following three possibilities are true. Let me write these down. Okay. I'm going to clear that. Okay. So here's where we're going to start. Uh, if W is a subset of R2, some set of ordered pairs, any set of ordered pairs of R2, okay? Um, then it is a subspace of R2 if and only if that means it goes both ways here one of the following three possibilities is true why? W consists of the single point Zero, zero. Okay. Uh, the only thing in W is a zero vector, you might say. Zero point. Okay. That would certainly be a subspace. Number two. W consists of 
all the points on a line that passes through the origin. Okay. Or the only third possibility, W consists of all R2. Okay? For it to be a subspace, it can only, it can be the origin, it can be any line from the origin, or it's the whole space. Now, the strange thing is it can't be a curve through the origin. Okay? It has to be a straight line. Okay? And that comes from the linearity principle. You know, because if you added two curves to the origin, you know, you wouldn't necessarily get just just a similar curve through the origin. You would get some sort of wacky thing, you know. But lines through the origin, uh, then when you uh, add this line through the origin and that line through the origin, they're still on that same line, okay? And uh, multiply by scalar any line through the origin to one to one. The point zero zero, yeah, you can do anything. Add zero 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 zero, you still got zero zero, okay? Or multiply any zero zero by any number, and you still get zero zero. And then the only other thing is, it's got to be all of origin, okay? So it's got to be one of those three, okay? Now, that's just sort of a voila. It is. Huh? Yeah. Here it is. There it is. Okay. Uh, it actually, I guess, means there, see it, or something like that. See it there. There it says. Okay. Um, for instance, one of the when I just said a curve, I was saying any curve, but take the unit circle, that's a curve, and that's an R2. Okay, take any two points on the unit circle, add them together, and they're not necessarily, in fact, most of the time, they're not on the unit circle, okay, because they just don't add up that way. So, and it doesn't contain the origin, too. You're absolutely right, okay? What's that? A parabola, okay? So that would, that would the it could contain the origin, but take two points that are on it, like one, one, and two, four. Okay, and if that's it, add those two together, then they're not necessarily on. Yeah. So, yeah. just like this, yeah. Uh, yeah. Say again? That wouldn't be on the origin, uh, on the parabola. So basically, those are your only three options. A single point, any line through that origin, single point of the origin, any line through the origin, or the entire plane. Those are the only three subspaces of R2. And then when you go to R3, it's a line through the plane. Yeah, well, you, yeah, you have the point, the plane through the origin, I mean, the line through, any line through the origin, any plane through the origin, or all the space. Yeah, you just go up one more dimension basically is exactly what you're doing from uh, differential equation you have a fundamental uh, what, what we call them fundamental sets yeah and the fundamental set would have to be one of those yeah, <laughs> possibilities so it's almost doing the same type thing so a subset of R2 that is not a subspace um, yeah, huh? Well, we already did. That's the circle, unit circle. Okay. Yeah, and that was the unit circle, and you already just proved it. So we'll begin with example eight next time, which is where we began the last time I taught this, or one time I taught. So homework exercises here include any of the odds one through five. Any of the odds 7 through 19, any of the odds 21 through 27, 
any of the odds 29 through 35, any of the odds 37 through 41, Look at 43 as a true false. You should be able to do that. And you can start checking on some of the others, but we'll, let me see, maybe I went too far. No. Let me back up and say only go through 35. We'll pick up the 37 through later. Good deal. All right. You need to take that. Bye. Yeah. Uh, could you punch the button twice? <laughs>